Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The part of God's Word that we will consider together this morning is our Gospel lesson for today. It's taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 13. At that time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. He answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered these things? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all perish too. Or those 18 who were killed when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all the people living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all perish too. He told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. He came looking for fruit on it, but he did not find any. So he said to the gardener, Look, for three years now I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I have found none. Cut it down. Why even let it use up the soil? But the gardener replied to him, Sir, leave it alone this year also, until I dig around it and put fertilizer on it. If it produces fruit next year, fine. But if not, then cut it down. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Dear Christian friends, today God teaches us the nature of sin and the nature of repentance. Sin is something that is worldwide. It is pervasive. It's something that's not going away until Jesus comes back on Judgment Day. So it's something that we deal with. Some, something that we deal with personally. It's something we deal with as a community. It's something we deal with as a family. And God wants us to deal with it correctly. Because sin, by its very nature, tempts us to deal with it incorrectly, to look to the wrong places when we find sin. And so he starts out, at that time there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. And that's a tragedy. Apparently there were some people from Galilee who came down from, uh, who came home and went down, or came from home to the temple to present some sacrifices, and Pilate sent soldiers to kill them for some reason or another so that their blood flowed with their sacrifices. And that's a tragedy. And it's something that, in a sinful world, draws our attention. All you have to do is turn on the news, and you see tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. It seems that newscasters can't help themselves. When they find a tragedy, they have to tell everybody. And it's something that we can relate to. Part of our sinful nature, when we see something bad happen to somebody, the first impulse is to tell somebody else. The second impulse is to judge them. Jesus answered them, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than the other Galileans because they suffered this way, or suffered these things? The nature of sin is that one of the first responses when we see sin in somebody else's life, when we see the results of sin in somebody else's life, the first, uh, one, of the, one of the temptations is to judge them for it, to say they must be worse sinners than somebody else. And of course, our sinful nature is secretly whispering into our ear, then I am, because they suffered these things. And of course, we have this monstrous double standard when we do that. When we see sin in somebody else's life, we focus on that and we see that, that the, the results of sin are what they deserve. In fact, they probably deserve worse. But when we see the sin in our own lives, what's the first thing we want there? Forgiveness. We want it wiped completely away so that it's not part of who we are. It's not part of how people see us. 
We rejoice in the fact that God forgives and forgets. And it is our desire that when people see us, instead of remembering the sins, of which there are many, they remember the grace that is ours. And so when Jesus said, do you think these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered these things? I tell you, no. That's not how it works. And we should know that. We should know that when tragedy visits somebody's home, that is not a sign of God's displeasure. Nor when success reaches somebody, does that, is that a sign of God's favor? Consider what happened in the life of Christ, which visited him. Tragedy or success, worldly success. Jesus was betrayed. Jesus was convicted unfairly. Jesus was lied about. Jesus was, Jesus was abused. Jesus was crucified. Jesus suffered the wrath of God. Look what happened to the disciples. Every single one of them went to jail for their faith. Is that a sign of God's displeasure? Or is that simply a sign of being in a sinful world? Somebody gets sick. Satan's all over us. I wonder what they did. In fact, when Jesus was walking with his disciples and they saw someone who was blind from birth, the disciples asked that very question. Did that guy sin or was it his parents that he was born blind? Jesus said, neither one. This is for the glory of God. The nature of sin, and Jesus went to the next one and he said, uh, or those 18 people who, who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all the people living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. The proper response to sin in somebody else's life is not to obsess over it, not to make sure that they convicted, get convicted for it. What does Jesus say the response is? Repent. Instead of focusing on somebody else's sin, which is what the Pharisees loved to do, he said, look at your own and repent. Recognize that whenever you see sin, wherever you see sin, it is a reminder that sin will kill you. And so repent. And as we learn in the Catechism, repentance has two parts. The first is sorrow over sin. And the second is to change our life. We change our mind. We change the way we see sin. Instead of seeing sin as something attractive, something we can get close to and still be okay, we see it as poison. And we see it as death. We see it as a fire that will burn us to a crisp. And we want nothing to do with it. And then we change our actions. We pray that God would strengthen us in our faith and would allow us to glorify Him and serve Him in righteousness and in purity that only He can provide. The proper response to sin is repentance, not judgment, not self-righteousness, but repentance. He told them a parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. He came looking for fruit on it, but he didn't find any. So he said to the gardener, look, for three years now I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree and have found none. Cut it down. Why should it even use up the soil? I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, of course, the, the owner of the vineyard is the father. The gardener is the son. And you know who the fig tree is. That's us. And look at a couple of things. First of all, whose tree is it? What's well, the owner's tree? Whose vineyard is it? The owner's vineyard. So he has the right to expect 
that the fig tree produce fruit. And that is God's desire for us. In fact, that's His command to us, that we produce fruit. And remember how John the Baptist and how Jesus both tied that into repentance? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance? That's what God is looking for, that there is fruit in keeping with repentance, that by faith we live to honor and glorify God. But how often does he see that it's not there? And my guess is that there is Satan working in some minds that are thinking of somebody else who's not showing repentance. Somebody else who's conv a convicted sinner. Someone else who's worthy of God's justice. I thought it was interesting that and, and during the, the kids' sermon that one of the kids wanted to see another one burn. Because <laughs> that's the sinful nature. We recognize that other people deserve to burn. But we pray that God would extend to us forgiveness instead. And so when the owner saw that there was no repentance, saw that in fact there was a sin and an absence of good works, he said, cut it down. And that is justice. It's not that God wasn't patient. He'd waited for three years. It's not that the tree didn't know what it was supposed to do. That's what fig trees do. But justice is that when, they, when we do not meet God's standard, there is judgment. But then the Savior enters. The gardener replied to him, Sir, leave it alone this year also until I dig around it and put fertilizer on it. If it, produce, if it produces fruit next year, fine. Jesus' love for sinners. That he wants to work with us and change us and strengthen us. That he would have us live by faith instead of by sight. That we would know what repentance is and celebrate it. That by the faith that the Holy Spirit has put into us through word and sacrament, that we can bring forth good fruit. And we think about, well, what is good fruit? What does God want from us? Does he want a perfect life? Does he want me to sacrifice everything? You know how God defines a good fruit, a good, fruit, a good work? Anything done by faith. When we worship God, it's a good fruit. When we repent of our sins, the angels rejoice. When we read a devotion, when we pray for somebody, when we share our faith, when we forgive, when we show love, God's love, to someone who needs it, because God loves them, that's a good work. They're usually not that impressive, and usually no one sees them. But God loves them, because they're produced by faith. And he works with us. And he works on us so that we can fulfill our purpose. The purpose of every living thing, the purpose of everything in the universe is to glorify God. The nature of sin is that it would take our focus off of God and tell us to use our time and our talent and our resources to serve us. To make sure that our life is more convenient. That our life is, more, is filled with more happiness. That our life is going the way according to our plan. That's the nature of sin. The nature of repentance is that we would ask God to lead us down His path instead. The path of forgiveness, 
the path of peace, the path of grace. And the stakes are high and the stakes are real. Because the gardener, Jesus, if not, cut it down. Sin kills people. It kills souls, and it kills them forever. That's justice. That's the nature of sin and God's perfect response to it. And it highlights how desperately we need Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The only solution for sin. The only one who could conquer sin, death, and Satan. The only hope that we have. Our source of life and peace and hope is Jesus Christ. And the lives that we live in response to that, the repentance that we produce is simply the natural response of faith, which is a gift of God. So we are not saved by how well we repent. We are not saved by how well we do. We are saved by grace alone. And by grace, we want to live in that grace and reflect that grace and celebrate that grace and share that grace. Because it is in the nature of repentance. It is in the nature, nature of faith to glorify God, to submit to Him, and to serve Him. Amen.